Once upon a time, there was a British captain named Lawrence Connors. He was captain of a ship that had for many years carried spices and silk and other valuables from Asia back to England. Recently, Queen Anne herself had granted him funding, a brand new caravel, some fancy navigation tools, and an esteemed, well-educated crew. This was his lifelong dream, as he had heard that the New World brought lots of riches. He was, however, extremely egotistical and greedy. He was mean to everybody, especially his crewmates, who worked hard under his leadership for very little gratitude. Every day he bossed his crewmates around so that they would work all of the time and keep his ship in top condition. If the crew didn't complete their tasks, he wouldn't let them sleep. He would let nothing get in the way of his success. The crew despised him because of this. One day, his ship was approached by the twisted pirates ruled by the ruthless Captain Witchman. Their black flag was up, meaning they would be taken prisoners. Connors' crew gave in and surrendered to the pirates. They would never be able to defeat them. The crewmates and Connors were first prisoners, then cleaners, and slowly they started to gain the pirates' trust. Connors was still not happy with his new position. He then came up with a plan to help him and his crewmates get away. While he was cleaning Captain Witchman's office, he took the key that locked the anchor's mechanism. Without it, the pirates couldn't move the ship. Later, he hung the key over the side of the boats and told them to let him and his crewmates go or he would drop it. The pirates accepted. However, his crew, their crew was enjoying their new lives with the pirates far more than they had enjoyed their lives in Captain Connors' ship. The captain went back to land alone on a lifeboat and hitched a ride with another British ship. He used his left over funding to get a new crew and ship. Because of that, the captain was filled with remorse. As he got to know his new crew, he realized they were way less talented at their jobs than his previous crew due to them being educated under a different court. Unfortunately, he was boarded by the same pirates who recognized him and who were about to throw him overboard. Until he finally called out to his former crew. He told them how much he regretted leaving them and how he wished he could have treated them better. The crew and even some of the other pirates were moved by his speech and decided to join him in battle. After a long fight, the pirates were defeated, and the crew excitedly returned to England and were praised for defeating the pirates. And ever since then, the crew had only successful voyages to South America. They traded for valuable resources like sugar and potatoes as part of the rise of the Trian Triangle. Unfortunately, they ended up spreading diseases to the indigenous peoples of the Americas, but the crew was too focused on their missions to care about their negative impacts. With the new resources, the crew were changing their diets and nutrition and they helped make England richer through the new economy. And ever since then, Captain Connors learned to always put his crew first. From that day forward, he would always treat his crewmates as equals. He would die as a wise and happy man with his friends at his side. The end.